Hi everyone, Mary here and we are working on chapter 7 um, and here goes some homework problems. Um, in May 2011, Thomas Blackthorne set a Guinness World Record for lifting 12.5 kilograms, a little over 27 pounds, 115 centimeters with his tongue. How much work did he do? And if you're totally loony, you can find this video on YouTube. Yeah, it's kind of icky. Okay, here we go. Now, when you lift something, you are working against the force of gravity. So work is the force that is done times the displacement. And what force do you use? You use the force that the that you are working against. So this situation, this gentleman is working against gravity. So he lifted the weight of this object. Um, so we're going to replace force of gravity with mass times acceleration of gravity. And he lifted it a distance or a displacement of 115 centimeters. So this is going to be 12.5 kilograms. To convert it from a mass to a weight, we have to multiply that by 9.8 meters per second squared and a displacement of 115 centimeters, but we want MKS units, so that's going to be 1.15 meters, so 1.15 meters. Throw that in a calculator, 12.5 times 9.8 times 1.15, and if I keep that in sig figs, I end up with 141. Uh, let's take a look at the units here. I'm going to end up with a kilogram times meter times meter, meters squared, divided by second squared. Kilogram meter squared divided by a second squared is a joule. So 141 joules of work were done. All right, next problem. How much work is done by pushing a 160 kilogram box 10.3 meters across a rough floor with a coefficient of friction of 0.5 at a constant speed? So here is a box. It is pushed across a floor at a constant speed. Now why is this important? This is important because if you are pushing something at a constant speed, we know the sum of the forces on it horizontally must equal zero. That means the force applied must be equal to the friction force acting on it. That is what that constant speed is going to tell us. So what is work being done against? Work is being done against friction. So the work that is being done is going to be equivalent to the frictional force times the displacement. So whenever you do work, you always look at what force are you working against. Friction force is going to be mu times normal force, and this is going to be equal to x. To determine normal force, we have to again look back at our box. Force of gravity is going to pull it down. Normal force is going to push it up. If we look at the sum of the forces vertically on our object, again those are going to equal zero because the box is on a nice level surface. So normal force will equal force of gravity. I'm going to replace normal force with force of gravity. So work, I'm just going to move over here so I have more room to work, to write, is going to be equal to mu normal force. I'm going to replace normal force with gravity. That's going to be mass times acceleration of gravity at times the displacement. So I want to know how much work has been done. So this is going to be equivalent to the coefficient of friction, and I just need to make sure I can see all the numbers in my problem. Apologize, I got to move this up a smidge. Um, the work that is done, eh, I know this is the trickiest part, isn't it? Mary's got to get the right bits on the screen. Okay, the coefficient of friction here is going to be 0.5. The mass of the box, I believe, is 160 kilograms. 
the acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared and it is pushed a distance of 10.3 meters. I'm just going to double check. I didn't make those numbers up out of silliness. 160, 10.3, 0.5. By golly, I didn't just make those numbers up out of silliness. So work is going to be 0.5 times 160 times 9.8 times 10.3. And I ended up with 8080. It should be joules, and that's why did I round off like that for three sig figs? And I ended up with kilograms, meters times meters, meters squared over seconds squared. A kilogram meter squared per second squared is a joule, and we are in good shape. Let's do another one. A person pulls a toboggan a distance of 35 meters along the snow with a rope directed 25 degrees above the snow. So here is my toboggan. I'm pulling on the rope a distance of 35.0 meters. The angle is 25 degrees above the horizontal. Tension of the rope is 94.0 Newtons, how much work is done in moving the toboggan horizontally? Now we only want the horizontal component of the force. Any force used to push, pull the toboggan up does not actually do work because what are we doing work against? We are doing work in this case against what force is pulling in the opposite direction. Well, that's going to be the resistive force of the snow or the force of friction. So the force that I care about is just this component of the force, the force that is parallel to the displacement. The force parallel to the displacement is what is actually involved in doing work. So this is going to be this side of this triangle, which will be 94 newtons, my hypotenuse. This is the adjacent side, so I'm going to use times the cosine of 25 degrees, and my displacement 35 meters. And so I'm going to take cosine of 25 times 94 times 35, and I get work done of 2982 Newton meters. Round that off to three sig figs. I get 2980. A Newton meter is a joule. Very, very good. I think we've probably got time to do one more in this video. So let's do number four. Conservation of energy and potential energy. How much work is needed to push a 950 kilogram car up an incline that is 810 meters long and tilted nine degrees above the horizontal? So here's what we've got. We have an incline. It is 900, excuse me, 810 meters long, 9 degrees above the horizontal, and I want to push a 950 kilogram car up that incline. That's what I want to do. Now, the cool thing about energy is we don't care about how you go from point A to point B. So I have a car that's down here, and I want to end up with my car up here. Down here I have just a car just sitting on the flat. Up here I have converted whatever energy I've put into it to potential energy at the top. So the work done by pushing the car is going to be conserved as potential energy at the top of the incline. So the work done is going to be equivalent to the mass of the car, the change in height, h, times the acceleration of gravity, as it doesn't matter if it goes in a straight line or if it goes in a curly Q line. I care about the change in height here. So in order to do that, I am going to need to find h. To find H, I'm going to use this triangle right here, and in order to use that triangle, this is going to be my hypotenuse, 
this is my angle, and this is going to be my opposite side. To find h, I'm going to use sine. The sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. I want to know the opposite side, because hypotenuse h over here is my opposite. So my opposite side is going to be the sine of 9 degrees times my hypotenuse, 810 meters. And if I put that in my calculator, sine of 9 degrees times 810, the change in height is going to be 127 meters. That's pretty high. This car was moved a long distance. So that is the height. So the energy change going from the bottom to the top of the hill is going to be equal to the mass of the car, 950 kilograms. The change in height of the car, 127 meters. Acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. So 950 times 9.8 times 127. And I end up with the total energy change is going to be equal to, and I need a little room to write down here, um, the energy input is going to be equivalent to 1182370. And if I round that off to three sig figs, it's going to be 1,180,000 joules. Let's make sure that those energy actually units actually work. So I ended up with, whoopsie, here we go, kilograms times meters times meters, meters squared over seconds squared. So I end up with kilogram meters squared over seconds squared, which is a joule. And I'm just double checking that that's the same answer I got when I did this earlier. And another way of writing it is to say scientific notation, 1.18 times 10 to the sixth joules. That works as well. All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.